and a grand good morning to you. Welcome, it's Wake Up Nigeria. And only one thing tops our mind when making each episode. We aim to take a finer show than we had from the last time and make it even better the next day. Good morning and welcome to a mm. brand new edition here for Wake Up Nigeria. And we're giving you a warm welcome this frigorific Tuesday morning. Uh, this is a scintillated, it will be, episode of your new metal Uno One Stop Family Breakfast Show, Wake Up Nigeria now. Uh, I don't want to be, but you know. Yeah? Give us the motivation this morning. No, 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 no <laughs> motivations today, trust us. The only motivation we can tell uh, you that, hey, make sure you step out of home with a very warm sweater like we're doing this morning. You should. You, man, yeah. It's so, what, what time did it start raining where you go? It started raining at about uh, 4.30 and I got beat by the rain because I actually came on my motorbike this morning. What, what happened? Hey, I just decided to ride. Okay, Here I am. All right. nothing happened to the guy. I just decided to ride in the rain. Well, decided to... hey, it's part of the adventure. I will continue that adventure on this beautiful Tuesday morning. Now, it only makes sense if you are there to savour as we dish it out hot. You need something hot for this very cold morning absolutely yeah? we mm. have a very exciting one hour 45 minutes of great television for you guys here this morning my name of course is mazino appeal and titi here sorry <laughs> <laughs> there's the kettle mic of course that's mine stream the show live tvc entertainment dot tv yes that's how you can hear us up. use the hashtag as well uh hashtag wake up nigeria on tvc and please make sure that you're following us across all social media platforms to be mm. part of the show all now right. you can watch us from anywhere around the world now i had to go check out the app and the app is excellent oh Tell Most of the time, it. and uh, if you do have maybe issues, maybe you might have to change your network or whatever, but then you can catch us via the app anywhere around the world. Let's get straight to what we have this morning. Yes, indeed. Let's let you know what we have coming for you this morning. Now, uh, with the Amu Games Project, a uh, non-profit initiative aimed at using <laughs> sports and games as a tool to club, uh, or rather club social vices, that's what we're going to be talking about this morning with Sheung Ayeni, who will be here to tell us all about the Amu Games. Adibola. Adifioye will be with us, an advanced certified autism specialist. Today, she will be talking about how to get acceptance for children with special needs. And then we move on to health this morning to discuss the link between alcohol abuse and mental illness, which Dr. or rather with Dr. Maimuna Kadiri. Um, popularly referred to as the celebrity shrink she's been here before she's a multiple award-winning mental health physician an advocate and also a coach as well finally we have actor and model leona mazur a nigerian american currently based in the netherlands now she was famously known as miss pepe if you remember from the papa jasko family comedy mm. drama produced by wali adenuga wali adenuga productions remember that one in 2001 uh, she walked runway in Nigeria fashion shows and also outside Nigeria in Paris and Milan and she will be here to tell us all about her journey. I remember her, the first, first player. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. Her. I love That's those it. eyes, man. You've seen Dune? Yes, I have seen Dune. <laughs> Do you like it? Ooh, just, just don't. It's don't not go, a Friday. Don't go back and forth. Do you I, like I, it? I, I, uh, and do you know why? If you I'm giving why between I yes and no, Dune? without any, um, you know, to go on, I'll say no, I do not like oh, it. But I don't blame them. I love it. I don't blame them. I actually I'll, love it. I, I, I was shocked that I love it. I have, I have faith in it. But, but I, you, do you know what? I was shocked that I love it. Why so? I don't know because it, it does. It, there was no action as much as we expected, but. Uh -huh. I, I, I love the progression, the storyline. It's a foundation. The, yeah, I loved it. <laughs> it's I a love foundation. It. But yeah, it's not Friday. We'll talk hey, about we'll that. We'll talk about it on Friday. <laughs> Friday. So if you guys are into, into um, oh, movies, do you understand? Mm. However, so yeah. yesterday it was launched, it was uh, revealed that the federal government's president has launched e -Naira. The e -Naira. You see, there's a lot of things about the e mm -hmm. You see, we, um, as, as a country, we, we have not embraced cryptocurrency. Well, mm -hmm. that's talking about from the government perspective. Yeah. There has been, you know, this is not cryptocurrency. It's uh, basically uh, the Naira. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's In a much more pushing a paper. Form. Yes, a paperless form. Yeah. You know, um, I don't know how you can decide to pick one part when it comes to technology and decide mm -hmm. to leave out some other part. Mm -hmm. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, well, Let's see how it evolves. Let's see how if you ask how me, it rolls out. I think the aim is just. If, if I want to say this, that I think I see where it's going. It's so that the government would be able to at least retract tax from members of the public. That's mm. the main thing. That's the main. If then, it's fluid, they know where to get it. They know I, how to when make it comes to e-currency, I wonder how the integration will be with the uh, with your regular banks because mm -hmm. you should be able when you have the app and you want to trade e naira, you should be able to take out that bank factor. Mm -hmm. But then the banks are going to push it. This is something that you know anything crypto or anything that is electronic, e electronic digital currency mm -hmm. kind of takes the bank out of the equation, mm -hmm. and they are pushing it. So let's just see how this works out. Hey. Uh, 
They're That's definitely going to have to embrace it. But it's all good. Hey, trust us. Mm. We are going to be all with it. So oh, we're going to try our best. After all, I've been for a very, very long time. Yes, we do have a very fantastic kitchen uh, <laughs> session coming your balance? way. <laughs> it's nah, going to be fantastic worry. today. So you just stick in there. And we're going to have a very fantastic chef come uh, in and make sure that we are well fed. Since it's just, uh, it's just <laughs> us men in here today, we're going to take over this whole show. So trust <laughs> yes, us. Yes, we are. And you're welcome. Let's do the news for a Tuesday morning here on Wake Up Nigeria. My name is Mazino Appeal. Now, the Anambra governorship elections is where we start, with the National Security Advisor assuring that it will be peaceful. Now, General Babagana Mongunu, while briefing the Independent National Electoral Commission, assured of uh, adequate measures to secure the poll. He also promised that law enforcement agencies will operate in accordance with the uh, re uh, requirements of their professional uh, during the uh, November 6 ballot. INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu also disclosed that the Commission has accomplished 12 out of the 14 activities listed in the timetable and schedule of activities for the election. He added that the Commission is working with the National Peace Committee to bring all political parties and candidates to commit to peace before, during, and also after the elections. In security, we have already done most of what we're supposed to do. All the law enforcement agencies, security agencies, etc., have been charged to conduct themselves in a manner that will command the general widespread respect of all the people of Anambra State and by extension the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The 2021 Anambra governorship election is holding in the next 12 days on 6 November 2021. Our deployment of non-sensitive materials and training of personnel for the election have virtually been concluded. The Commission has successfully accomplished 12 out of 14 activities listed <coughs> in the timetable and schedule of activities for the election released in January this year. The two outstanding activities are the last day of campaign at midnight on Thursday, 4th November 2021, and Election Day, which remains Saturday, 6th November 2021. Now, no fewer than 18 persons were reportedly killed in the early hours of yesterday by gunmen at Mazakaku in Mashegu Local Government Council of the state. The armed men in their numbers stormed the mosque in the community while the victims were performing their morning prayers. According to reports, the attackers shot the victims at close range inside, killing many persons and leaving others injured. It was gathered that the armed men came on motorcycles. Uh, the Niger State Police Command is yet to confirm the attack. Moving on now to Kaduna, at least four persons have been reported killed and three others injured in a brutal clash between some locals and herders in Zango Kataf local government area of Kaduna State. According to reports by the security authorities, the clash occurred along cattle routes in Jakasa village in Zango Kataf local council and uh, later escalated into a fierce fire exchange between the two groups before the arrival of security operatives. This was confirmed by the Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs in Kaduna State, Samuel Arwa, in a security report on Monday following the incident. A group of armed men attacked some herders at Manchok in Kaura local government area in what security agencies describe as uh, apparent reprisal. Receiving a report, Governor Nasir al Rufai condemned the incident and prayed for their repose, or rather the repose, of the souls of those who were killed. And that's all we have for the news this morning. And you're welcome. Let's tell you the headlines you're going to be waking up to this morning. And we're going to start from a couple of the national dailies, which are conversant to you. This morning, uh, Tuesday, October 6, uh, 26th, rather, we are going to be starting with the Daily Trust newspaper. And if you join me, the first big headline here, Buhari launches e-Naira, like we talked about from before, it says GDP to rise by 11.9 trillion Naira. Um, policy will aid government's welfare policy, 33 banks running e-currency as CBN mints a 500 million naira. What you need to know about the e-naira, just in case you are curious, you can find that inside of the Daily Trust at the top of
of the paper here. Gunmen attack Niger Mosque, kill 18 worshippers, who we talked about inside the news. And NLC rejects compulsory COVID-19 vaccinations. At the, uh, well, the photo story here shows the launch of the Inara there with the president and vice president of Nigeria. To the side of that, Senator's kick as EFCC transfers a forfeited assets of AGF office and Kano demands 1% special status in revenue allocation formula. My mother-in-law asked me to poison my stepchildren, woman tells court. And finally, for the Daily Trust Northern Coalition, uh, coalition rather, asks court to exit southeast from Nigeria. That's what we have for the Daily Trust. And we move on now to Blueprint. Big story for the Blueprint. Talk to IPOB, Igboho, as I uh, talk to bandits. Uh, one Buhari against declaring them terrorists. Stop tagging terrorists as bandits. Uh, banditry, says Akiridolu. You're doing PR for governor, for gunmen, rather, and um, Omokri slams Gumi. Worshippers killed, seven abducted in Niger Mosque. Um, once more, look at the president and vice president there on the launch of the E Naira at the bottom of the blueprint. And I'm gubernatorial elections. NSA reads the Riot Act to arsonists uh, and others. And 2022 budget, Senate. Uh, committee rejects science minister's presentation. Police FRSC VIO responsible for hike in food prices. Say investigation. Uh, that is very interesting. And you can find that on page 29 of the blueprint. And oil jailbreak. Uh, jailbreak. FG enlists Interpol to recapture fleeing inmates. PDP convention ignore distractions. Mackinday urges members. We move on now to our next daily, and that, of course, is uh, the Guardian newspaper. Front page of the Guardian newspaper this morning, you are met with this headline, E. Naira goes live as CBN floats a new scheme to boost economy. 33 banks join platform. CBN mints 500 million transactions on E. Naira free for 90 days. And Buhari insists on closed monitoring, says digital currency will boost GDP by 29 billion dollars and CBN says foreign reserves surpass 40 billion dollars at the top of the Guardian newspaper don't force workers to vaccinate NLC advises federal government and fresh trouble for RG Kalu as FG asks uh, appeal courts to order retrial a uh, retrial rather in alleged 7.1 billion naira fraud that on page four on page five gunmen kill 18 in Niger kidnap Bauchi residents and EFCC can investigate your 141 million naira alleged share fraud, court tells I, um, IGI. And at the bottom of the Guardian first page, Northwest demands a lion's share of revenue allocation to states, LGAs, uh, and RMACFC explains why revenue formula has not been reviewed since 1992. FRC cautions states on rising debt profile, reckless loans, and threatens uh, financial institutions uh, against violating uh, violations, rather violating due process in granting loans. Stop using consultations for tax collection, and experts tell FG uh, and NYCN rally support for FIRS to tackle tax defaulters. That's it for the Guardian. Now, let's see. We have very many papers this morning to cover. News Direct is our next one, and once again, we're met with that big headline on e Naira as the federal government projects $29 billion GDP growth as CBN releases guidelines for e Naira and aggressive uh, awareness required to achieve projections, say experts, and I do agree, and I'm sure that you do as well. UBA's gross earnings hit $490.3 billion Naira in third quarter of 2021, and Navy takes delivery of four ballistic gunboats for anti-bunkering operations. FG to inaugurate, um, inaugurate made in Nigeria, um, bright for, uh, to save $300 million annually, and standard control Lagos State Government steals, uh, seals houses in Ekbe for contravention of building codes. That's as much as we can take for the dailies. Those are the headlines you will be waking up to this morning. Welcome back. What's up and about with the guys? We're going to talk about this like as if it's men's corner. This yeah. should, should, should not enjoy this thing too much. Don't enjoy it too much. <laughs> because because we want to... it's just, not say we want guys' version. <laughs> yes, Please. this is guys' version Don't for chill. you guys. Just take it okay. like it is. We're going to come at it from the business angle. Let's tell what we're talking about today. So a couple of uh, hours ago, because this was only yesterday, actually been trending all weekend. Uh, High Chief, is that what he's called? Chief uh, Priest. Chief Priest. Chief Priest. Kubana. 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 Yes. Celebrity Bauman. Exactly. He, he, he told uh, of um, a certain instance that had to do with a Big Brother contestant just passed from season six, I think, Maria, yeah. um, actually uh, stealing his 
his sister's husband. And this has gone on to very, very many people who have brought their own perspective to the story and here and, and, and there, and receipts as well. It's a very interesting dynamic to the entire reality TV thing. Mm. While there are other discussions to be had about uh, who stole whose husband, how long the, 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 the married had been moribund, and who's entering at this yeah. time. And so, so there's one thing that actually interested me here, the fact that even with the claim that this is a reality show, free and fair, and that people enter into it from a random selection, the fact is it is not so random act after all. And that's the part that piques me here. <laughs> because you can see that you need to either have connection, be well-to-do, know certain people, be able to bring something to the table to or the someone table, yeah. to the table before so you are actually even considered, considered to be to a be on part the show. or to be hmm. on, on the show. So that, for me, was the takeaway. Was, was the takeaway yeah. There are many stray bullets that touched very everybody, many, yeah. very many brands that were touched. That I don't want to mention these <laughs> brands, but you can see from the receipts that everybody had some interest in it, and it's no longer as free and fair as you thought it was. Yes, I mean, if people under, if people who are connected to it will come out and see stuff like um, this person was a sponsor to be there, mm -hmm. this person knew this person, this person got this person inside, and mm -hmm. all of that, and then it feels that way. You know, it feels like yes, okay, there's more to this than all of that. And then I would, um, I, I would, I would, I would also say, you know, concerning the issue, you know, and all of that, social media. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, when he put it out, there was something he said. He said because there was a threat to life. Okay. Now that's a good enough reason to put something out. Yeah. Do you understand? So sure. that you know, you, you when when you put something like that, if there's a if that if there was a threat to life, but we know they shared chats and all of that. Yeah. And there was something Maria said about um, the, uh, you know trying to even make the marriage work. Oh yeah, well that was just. I don't, I don't, was... I don't understand where that <laughs> angle. Well, I'll the real me almost came out. Yeah. See, let me tell you what it was. Yeah, she seemingly reached out to the wife of yeah. her husband. She was said to have stolen, yeah. trying to tell her to work on her marriage. I, I read the entire chat and I thought how much of Boulder Dash it was, because it was ridiculous. Yeah, it was, it you, just, it was, uh, I don't know, it was, it was, I'm coming and I'm going at the exactly. same time. Exactly, it, pick like, a side, I don't get you. It, 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 it was it like, like, come on, be going. It was a business transaction that mm. kind of segued into a relationship for her, now talking about uh, uh, coming from her side, that kind of like segued into a relationship with this person who was supposed to be sponsoring her. Mm. And um, eventually, this caused problems in his marriage, and, you know, she's now saying, oh, I'm not doing again, and I'm so sorry. She tried to apologize, but it all seems quite well, a mess. I think Something to also um, note is that he, um, another Big Brother contestant was also linked to this whole um, quagmire. You're talking about Mercy, yeah? I'm talking about Mercy, because oh. she was also, um, what's the word, to, suggested to have a link with this Kevin person. The same person, yeah. whom is the, uh, Who is the husband being spoken about here um, in some other instances from the past shows. And she's like, no, no, no. no. But the trend here is this, that the same people have interest in this reality show, and it seems to be a recurrent factor. Yeah, a, re a recurrent. So it, 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 puts, it puts the integrity exactly. into question. So all, most of you people puts, there are there firing, of, shouting, uh, and trying to, you know, <laughs> on top of winners and all of that. I mean, imagine how many people line up to, don't, to try get, and get into get the show. Don't get started on that one, man. There was this particular day when I think it was somewhere around Allen mm -hmm. where there was an audition. Mm -hmm. For uh, for Big Brother, mm -hmm. you need you to see. I've I've seen that. I've seen that. I saw the videos and everything. People were people were people were fighting to climb the fence. People were fence fainting. Was right away. People were exhausted. OMG, people were trying. Man. And then the contestants come out and then they tell you that oh by the way um it was free and fair. I came here under my own steam. I didn't. <laughs> nobody helped me and all of that. I've always said <laughs> that there is something to look at into. There's something to to actually investigate when it comes to the selection process. And there you have it. It's there in the open. If you're selected, would you go? Don't kill yourself. Would you go, Mazino? Me? Uh, I wouldn't uh, go, uh, except uh, if you want me to be the host. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey. He said it. Yeah. But hey, come on. Hey, all what for the What do you think about all of Let us know on social media. What do you think about all the brouhaha? Man, when we post up, if you just saw another comment section, let's know your thoughts. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, the Amoa Games Project is a bit initiative aimed using sports and games as a tool to curb social vices while empowering the youths. Now, Sheon Ayane is with us this morning to talk to us about that. It's great to have you. You are welcome. Good morning. After a two-year hiatus, the Amuwa Games is back. Okay. I had a wonderful experience when I was there the last time in 2019. Um, let's talk about that. What, uh, let's talk about 29 before we move into this one. Um, when it ended, how many of the objectives that you set out to achieve did you finally get to achieve? 
Uh, I would say all because okay. the, the three major objectives. Mm. Coming now, unity. You saw the people it when you came. Definitely, yeah. that was in spite of the rain. I think mm -hmm. that day was the finals, and the, the, the touch relay went on under the rain. rain. People still came out. People still turned out. Yeah, it was wonderful. They loved their games, and, they do. and then we had them. Um, Sports, mm. sports, of course. You saw the sports was there, mm. and then the final one was um, youth development. Okay. I, I can't say we can measure that immediately, but okay. of course, as it's a continuous goes process. On, as time see, goes on, how. all right. So there, there was a break, of course, which was uh, which had to do with COVID and all COVID. that. But now it is back. What is the plan? What is happening this year? How is it going to be bigger? Let's talk about Amor Games 2021. One. You yeah. know, there was Euro 2020 <laughs> that they got that in 2021, but they still call it 2020. So this is, is that Amor Games 20 in 21 or it is 21? It's Amor Games 2021. So, okay. so what we do is we put a break in between. It's okay. a two year affair. To, right. So 2019. The next one being 2023. Oh, okay. Yeah, so usually it's going we to be mix it with binary. music, sports, okay. music, sports. So, oh, okay. So Wonderful. Next, yeah. next one. All right. So let's talk about this year. What are the plans for this year? Uh, this year. What's going to be happening? We're adding one more tournament. Yeah, okay. Five a side. It's five a new a side. One. Yeah, five okay. a side soccer. Um, so it makes it to make it to make it seventeen games in all now. Hmm. That'll be seventeen games, including football, basketball, volleyball, chess, scrabble, swimming, tennis, long, um, tennis, table tennis. Video games, of course. Mm. Um, okay. Cycling. cycling. Cycling was added in 2019, okay. if you oh, remember. Okay. And so we, we hope to get, maybe not add more games, maybe start to get feedback and see what games to stop, what games, what to, games add. to add. For instance, we've been getting calls from the boxing associations around that. Please include boxing, but I'm still scared, and the committee is still scared to add to boxing, add boxing to, yeah. the, to the games. Okay. I don't know. I don't know how So how works. long, what, are, what is the period for these games? How long are they going to be played this year? One month. It's usually a one month. One month um, thing. Festival. And it's still maintaining that same timeline. Still one month. Um, okay. We use all the weekends in the month. In the month. Okay. So that um, people from the corporate world can participate. To, for instance, you see a banker playing snooker. Definitely. You see a, a lawyer playing lawn tennis. Mm. You know, Wonderful. Because it's they, away from their nine to five job, jobs. They, they yes. can participate in community, in community. community sports. Mm. All right, so what, 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 is, what is the time now? When is it starting? How, when is this year will start on November 6th. November 6th, yeah, okay. That's the first Saturday in November. Okay. We're going to be ending on November 28th. All that's right. the last Sunday in November. Now, who are the people eligible to contest in the games? Eligibility, um, let's talk about that. Residents of the community, residents of our mother thing. Yeah, I know that some people can be bringing in mercenaries. No, no, no. <laughs> 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 or, uh, uh, stationary stores player to come and captain the team for for street A or something. They will fish, they will fish you out. Now you ah. know we know ourselves. What, what is the yes? What is the yeah. plan? Is there any plan to you know to curb such instances where you have people who are not part of the community come in to be a part of uh, the okay. games? So we we were smart with the way we created the registration forms. Okay. Uh, there was this registration that went on. I mean, that's we've ended the registration now. So we put somewhere in the registration form, where do you live? Mm. Not making them know what exactly what to use that for. Now, when you feel where you live, it automatically zones you into a team. When you get into the team, you see people in your area. And then if you don't live there, they will quickly spot you and say, ah, we don't know. Where, where did you say you? I mean, mm. you understand? Yeah, I understand. So it's easy to know if you're not part of community mm. um, because you have to state where you live. where you live okay wonderful now at the end of all of this everybody wants to win yeah, yeah. what are the prizes for those who win what are what are what are we winners taking home this time around ah, we well you know you know you know the culture now we usually don't is he, talk, is he handshake <laughs> we I don't know. talk about the prizes because it's it's a community thing again okay. no no big sponsors yet okay uh, just have support here and there here and there okay um, although, although we also appreciate those that have supported us as okay well, that have given us some things so when we gather these monies mm. and we spend out of them to do the whole game to organize it. what is left yeah is what we usually distribute as um Prizes. As prizes, we, we don't okay. want to promise people what we we won't be able to give them. I understand where you're coming from. That whole community thing. So it's all about participation. That's the main thing. Yeah. Now, um, I I was there when I was there the last time and all of that. Um, ease of access around Festac area. I know that uh, Festac as a community, you know, can be closely knit and all of that. They're knit together and all of that. Um, how is it when it comes to 
moving around in the community and all of that, the roads, the network, the, the games, the venues, you know, because now this is something that, that will bring people from other places to come yeah. and watch, yeah. you know. Are there any plans for security? How is, how is the movement around? What are, when it comes to logistics? Okay, so um, I would say for security, we are, we are there, we are okay. good. Because uh, again, local government is involved in this and, and they've put their, their resources in place for the security. Okay. However, the road network outside the Amuwo community mm -hmm. may not be as good because of course, we know we know we need the government to still come to, okay. to intervene in the road situation. Okay. However, in the community, in itself, the community itself, the road is network it? is, is, is So it's is easy for people to access different points of the games and all yeah. of that. Yeah. How many venues do we have? How many venues? Is it somewhere that it's spread across? Like, uh, you know, can you just give us a kind of overview okay. when it comes to so that people who come in, how, how do they move around different venues and all of that? Yeah, okay, so, so we have indoor games. Okay. We try to put the indoor games in some private facilities, like a bar. Okay. So then the outdoor games are in um, some primary. Okay, there's a football that takes place in the primary school in Mile Two. Another football game will take place in FHA, further FHA field. Okay. First stack. So. Was that know, where we were the last time? You were that, in Mile Two. Yes, you were yes. Who went Mile Two? Oh, okay. So, so FHA right. will host, also host some games. Some games. Okay. So that's two venues. Okay. So for there's football. A, there's a place it's called Darius Tough. Okay. A new tough. We have a new. You need to come and see the tough. A very oh. new tough. Oh, a new tough, right? Because I know the last time there, 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 there could be limitations when it comes to fields in primary school. We know West Sand maybe probably has yeah. overtaken a large portion of all of that. But hey, come on, it's about co uh, the community coming together to play and all of that. And, and, you, and you know, it, it, be, because of these games, yeah. people are beginning to build some facilities. I mean, when and that's what we want to encourage. Let other communities copy us if they okay. want to. You know, yeah. when people do these things. You'll find out that people now start to invest in maybe playgrounds, sport facilities, just to, mm. like the turf was built um, some years ago, maybe because of a more game that I don't know, but now we have a turf. Mm. Some facilities are getting improved in mm. preparation. And all, and all of that. And all that. How has the response been from, I know you held the first edition, the response from the residents of Amuwa Dauphin? How has it been? And, and I'm not saying this to ask because you're the organizer of games. Of course, you have something good to say. But, you know, individual, when people come and meet you, what do they say about these games? I mean, I've been... The feedback. Feedback is fantastic. Mm. Good thing is they now get the message. They get it that hey, this is not somebody trying to come and make money. This is mm. for us. I mean, because they've gotten that message, that alone in itself, I'm happy. Um, they, they know, okay, mm. this is not about somebody trying to make money off us or somebody trying to do business. This is our team in the community. And, and I've started, started seeing community people coming up as sponsors. Okay. For instance, um, a, a guy in the community sponsoring the football activities single-handedly, mm. you know. Yeah. That's something that... That's what... That's something we want to, mm, they they want want to, to have. Do. And then people come in to tell us, come and use our facility for free. Hmm. For instance, the, the diary stuff I was talking about. Yes. The person that owns it says, come, come use my facility Wonderful. to do all Wonderful. that. Wonderful. And then we get support from the local government, which is also good. You know, when hmm. local government says, we like this. All right. I mean, that means that's some form of endorsement. And it the is. House of Assembly to our, our House of Assembly member, hmm. and that's Honorable Macaulay. OK. She's also into this. So into one this. more, this is like everybody saying, we love our team. Let's All right, wonderful. Now, I remember that when I was there last time, um, GT the Gator Man was, yeah. uh, you know, was part of it and over. You had one or two celebrities and all of that. Um, and then I know that Sam Sultan also has, uh, you know, late past has been part of this and all of that. Now, when it, is, is there going, I know music is another different thing, but is there going to be any sort of, uh, we have uh, music or, st or some uh, celebrities or all that as part of this one? Is yeah, there any? We are, we are going to have them. In fact, they are going to be more this year. Okay. You know, we used to have just the music guys. Okay. You, you, saw, you saw GT, you mm. saw FaZe the last time. Africa, mm. China, carried yeah. the torch. Yes. And um, we had Indomix. Yeah. Now we are having Peter Rufai, and he's bringing mm. his friends. You know, oh. Peter Rufai stays in Amor, I think. Wonderful, one of the wonderful, wonderful. And he has promised that he's going to come with people like maybe Utaka. Okay. And, um, he mentioned a few names. Okay. In the first act, 
Bring, yeah, okay. They all came out first act. So some of them came out first act. So oh, okay. We're going to be having sport icons and we're going and to be having that. celebrities. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Um, this is wishing you the best and uh, hopefully it goes without a glitch and uh, you achieve that communal development that you want yeah. and uh, that you know getting the youth involved and all of that uh, bringing me you know showing that our mode of in, in a great light so wishing you the best thank you very well done. much well done all right so that's it i hope you're able to pick up something if you are around our mode of in november 6th november 6th that's when it starts yeah. to 28 so the weekend uh, yeah. when you say weekend so it's friday saturdays involved. no just saturdays, saturdays, saturdays and sunday so that you can go to work from monday <laughs> from to monday friday. to friday <laughs> wonderful so if you are around a more dolphin or anywhere and you want to do sports tourism the Amor Odofi Games is somewhere to head to every Saturday and Sunday from the 6th of November across the whole month. It's going to be a wonderful one. We'll take this time out now. There's more to come on the show. Welcome inside the kitchen. And we have uh, Chef Flora in the studio here with us. Yay, Chef Flora. Welcome uh, from Luffy Tastia. Now I got that right. Welcome. So um, together we're going to be making some fantastic ofada. Am I correct? Ofada sauce. Ofada sauce here this morning. And you can see our spread already here on the table. We are ready. Some very indigenous material here, or ingredients, I should say, here. But first of all, Chef, tell us exactly why today's meal is going to be special. Well, uh, today's meal is going to be very special because uh, it's our locally made rice. Ah, locally from where exactly? From Ogun State. Yeah, from Ogun State. What part of Ogun State are you from? Uh, this uh, in, uh, locally made uh, grown rice mm -hmm. is from uh, a community in uh, Ofada. Ofada. So the rice is actually named after the community where it is grown mm. and is and uh, it's, it's, it's unique, it's, it can be described as a natural mm -hmm. uh, rice, mm -hmm. uh, no genetic modification. Nice, nice, that's uh, good. It's in its natural state. Nice. It can be best described as uh, unpolished rice. Unpolished rice, and that's what we see here. I see that it has a very different kind of texture from the regular rice. Yeah. It's, a bit, it's a bit rounder than the regular rice. Yeah, it's, it's a short grain. Very short, yeah, they're very short grains. With the regular rice, I can eat it just as it is raw. But can I do that with this? Can I eat this one raw? Have you ever mm, tried it? No, I have not. Ah, okay, so oh. I'm not going to be trying that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be trying that. So there's a place called Ofada in Ogun State. Yeah. That's is it the Ofada is. as you're leaving Lagos? Is yeah. that the same Ofada? Yeah, we have only just one Ofada community. For real? So that's the famous Ofada. Okay, so all the Ofada you guys have been eating is from next door. Okay, that's very interesting. Okay, so I see that we have so many ingredients here. Some of, yes. them, um, some of them look very unfamiliar. Let me guess, that is the Dawa, is that... Yeah, this is a uh, fermented locust bean. We uh -huh. call it iru. Okay, iru. Okay, yes. iru. And here we have what now? We have uh, the combination of the green mm. uh, pepper okay. that we blend here. Okay. This one has been blended and baboy. Oh, now I get why it's different. It's a different color altogether. Yeah. And then you said this is palm oil. This is the breached palm oil. Breached. Yes, breached. Mm. As in we've bleached already. It, okay, yes. okay, 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 great. Okay, no wonder it looks brown. So everything looks already kind of like uh, pre prepared. Yes. Let's put it that way. And yes. our protein here is yes. um, pomo and some uh, beef. Meat. So, why yes. do we have eggs though? I don't see egg in my ofada when I'm eating it out there. You know, uh, ofada happens to be uh, a kind of rice that is looked down on. Mm. Uh, a lot of people look at it as. Mm -hmm. but our uh, father is now taking uh, mm. a stage, okay. a yeah. front stage. But a lot of there. people love it now. But raising the status and so of our father. They, they've improved on the serving, nice. the way we serve. So Fantastic. now we can serve it with egg, mm -hmm. uh, fried plantain. A host of things. Okay, so let's get started. What are we going to start with first? Oh, by the way, yes, we have our, um, what are they called? Yes, uh, this is the leaf mm -hmm. we use in wrapping it. They use it in the olden days in wrapping it, but yeah. right now, because of uh, uh, some people don't really like okay. they are turning on leaves. Yeah, so. well, we like it. I especially <laughs> like it on a very hot so. day. <laughs> well, it's fantastic. So it's We're going to be showing you guys that. the ingredients on your TV screens, um, just in case you guys want to take notes. So don't you guys worry. We'll let you guys know exactly what. You, but you can see from here, we've got some seasoning, onions, bell peppers, already um, uh, prepared here. Oh, wow, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, Chef Flora, why do we have watermelon, ginger, and pineapple? Okay, so that's just the, our, to make a juice along oh, with Oh, nice, you are good. 
good. All right, so let's get started. What are we doing first of all? Okay, so we are going first with the oil. Okay. Oh. You need the oil. Anything you need me to help you with, just let me know, okay? And okay. I can put this one on for you. Let's okay. put it on there. There you go. Everything works, don't you worry. There you go with the oil. All right. So while Chef Flora is going to be getting all of this ready, uh, we're going to go on to our next segment. But remember, now we're making ofada sauce this morning with very indigenous ingredients here, from beef to bell peppers to onions, some dadao, is it locust beans, you want to call it, regular eggs and some, well, in just about a couple of minutes, our sauce is going to be ready, and you will be a part of it. But let's do parenting now with Mike, and then when we get back, we'll tell you how we've progressed on. So do stay tuned. Our parenting guest today is Adibola Adifioye. She is an advanced certified autism specialist. Now we're talking about how to get acceptance for children with special needs. It's great to have you. You are welcome. Thank you very much. I know you have a very a great passion for children with special needs. That's all you are about. Now this is very, how to gain acceptance. Are you talking about acceptance from? Uh, from the outside, from people, from the general public, or are you talking about acceptance in the family? What, what acceptance are we, are we talking about here now? I'm talking about both. Okay, both. Because the family has to accept first mm. before you can transcend it to the society. Because mm. if, if your immediate environment isn't accepting, there's no how you will be able to do it to the larger society. So mm. it has to, one has to come before the other. It is not easy for parents when they, they, when they have a special kid or when they find out that they have a special kid. It seems like all, you know, it, 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 there's that feeling of, oh, why me? There's that depression and all of that. Let's start from there. Yeah. How, do we, how, how do such parents pick up, uh, you know, that responsibility to parent such a child? Okay, yeah, so basically we would say that the, the parents have to accept first. And it's, like you said, it's not easy. It's not an easy thing. It's, sometimes some people, it takes a while. Some, like, some months, some even years. Some it never ever yeah, happens. Yeah, some it never even happens. And then, or sometimes the father might accept, the mother might not accept, or the mother might accept, or the father might. So it's, it's, it works for different people in different ways. But what we always advise is no matter, the longer you take in accepting, the longer it takes for the child to, to be able to do things he or she can do because like we always say, every child can learn. Every child can do things. We just need to find the right way, the right method of teaching that child. Mm. So it's, we, what we always do also is we try to um, emphasize the child's strengths because every, no matter the kind of challenge the child has, there's a strength in that child. So we mm. try to highlight the strength of the child. When the parents begin to see the strengths, okay, all hope is not lost. There are actually good, there are some things that this child can do. So when they begin to see that, they get a bit, should I say encouraged, or they get a bit, um, what word would I use now? They see that there's light at the end of the tunnel. tunnel. Maybe, yeah. Now let's talk about cases that you might have come across. What kind of strengths do, have you ever seen in some of these children with special needs? Wow, we've come to realize that children, they're very creative. They're very artistic. Mm. Some of them have gifted in music. Some mm. of them sports and all that. So it's, and then they're very good with their hands. I once had okay. a client where, when, before I met the parents, the child used to tear paper. Any paper the child sees, he just tears. They couldn't understand why. As far as the parents were concerned, they felt he was messing the house. But upon studying and getting to meet the child, I realized the child was drawing patterns with his hands. Hmm. So we're like, okay, can we, how can, and then the child was young, so we couldn't send him to like a, a, a tailoring school, or should I say, or a partnering school at the beginning. So we needed him, him to go to regular school. So by the time he was six, he was, he, his patterns were more defined. So we sent him to a pattern drafting school. Hmm. Yeah, so he, he, right now he does things with the system because he learns how to work with the, um, with the computer and all that. But then he could, he could actually tear out a pattern, a dress pattern with his hands, with his fingers. So. You know, this, this wows me. I mean, having to see something like that and find out that, oh, there's something that was in this kid's mind that was trying to come together and trying to form together. Oh, yeah. There is something. Now, it's a, it's a bit more challenging when it comes to the general public. Yeah acceptance from and by the general public. public yeah. How do you advise that uh, this one is, is, is tackled? I like, one thing is education. You need to educate the general the public. public. Yeah. And that is like, what we are doing here, educating you. That people with special needs are not, uh, they are not, they're not, they're not spiritual, it's not one thing and all of that, you know, the misconception yeah. that, yeah, okay, so yeah, yeah. so how do we do that? Like I said, education. Now, when you have it, when you realize you have a child with a need, you need to get every, every information you can on that child so that when someone sees him or her outside, you can explain what the condition is. 
you can tell them it's not contagious. It's not going to fly from my child to yours. And then because of the society we live in, we're a very religious society. What mm. we don't understand, we spiritualize. Very so true. We, under we think that maybe because a child has autism and he's not, or has ADHD because he's not settled, we are quick to think that maybe he's, he has a demon mm. or something is wrong, you know. But when, you, when you're educated, when you're informed about what is wrong with your child, you can tell the next person. Maybe when you, because you know how it is when you see a child de um, behave differently, you, you see people look at them like giving eye comments, as in eye yeah. gazes and all that. So when you see that kind of thing, you just smile and be like, no, don't worry, there's nothing to worry about. And then you educate the child, mm. the, 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 person. the person. And w one thing we know is that knowledge, pro there's light in knowledge. When you pass knowledge around, you see the person asking more questions. Because I always say, Nigerians generally, we're actually a caring people when we know the truth. So when you explain, and they get more empathic, they're like, oh, wow, so how do you manage? What is wrong? What happened? How did, you know? So there they get more interested. Yeah. Yes, yeah, there's a paradigm shift. Yeah, that's the now, word. Now, uh, when it's, there's also a case of these children being bullied. This is where authorities, maybe in school, maybe in places where they are, uh, maybe where they go to a place like a park, a leisure center or something, and all of that. What can, now this has to be maybe involved with authorities of places like this. What can be done to ensure that these children are given the best shot that they have at a normal life? Okay, now let me give an example of school bullying. I had a client also that the child was going to a school and he had autism. He was nonverbal, but he was doing well. And we were like, okay, from his former school, they had accepted him, but after a while, he had, his competencies were not being harnessed where he was, so we needed to get him a new school. And the school authorities knew but they didn't inform the class students. And that's where we always explain that wherever you're taking your child, whether it's school, even if the management knows, you need to cascade the knowledge down. Not only the management, the children, the classmates need to know that there's something, there's something wrong and this is how you can help him or her. And what happened was that the child was in class, but wasn't talking. You know when they talked to him, he wasn't responding because he couldn't talk. They felt he was full of himself and all that. And then one day during lunch, he was going on the corridor and they pushed him and they like really beat him. You know, when they, by the time his parents came, he was in shock and all that. He was like, he was throwing a panic attack, you know? So we mm. had to take him back and he took him back like another six months regression. We had to like start all over again, you know? And he was afraid to go to school, but we had to like keep telling the school. And that's what we explained. Like I said, we can't share enough knowledge about these things. We need to keep explaining that this, it's not this child's fault. If he's doing this, this is the reason. We ask you to be, do this, help the child. And that's why we keep saying knowledge is key. You need to pass it around. Even to, you know, the government is trying. We, 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 at least, Le I know Lagos is doing a bit and all that, but we can do better. Create awareness. Let there be signs everywhere. Like, everywhere you go now, you see, like, fire instructions and all that. If we can do those kind of things everywhere so that every Tom, Dick, and Harry can see it and have basic knowledge, basic understanding that, okay, if you see someone behaving this way, it's not because... He's crazy. There's just something wrong. How can you help the person? You know, so we just need it to let the knowledge go all around. Let it be everywhere. Like, you know, now everybody there's every there's a mask sign everywhere. If we can put those signages everywhere we go, that once you turn, if you see someone reacting to something, it's not because there's something wrong, it's just he or she needs help. You know, so it'll be better. All right, thank you very much. It was quite uh, an enlightening one. Thank you. And uh, wishing you the best. Keep on doing the good work. Thank you doing. very much. All right, thank you. That's it. The first lap of the show is done. Uh, we'll take this time out now and be back with the second lap. Ah, the first hour has run by so fast. Yes. What happens when time runs fast? Is it that you're busy or you I love what you're doing or what? You're, yeah, I think it's a, it's a factor of both of them. You, mm. know, you love what you're doing and then you're very, very busy. Just like we have been since the past one hour here since 7 o'clock mm. when we started for Wake Up Niger. Yes, it is Man Crush Tuesday. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> we forgot to say. When last were you used as a Man Crush? Uh, well, I, I get that often. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, no. Okay, okay. Well, <laughs> no, yeah. I don't. It's, it's actually <laughs> very, very. Just today, you can just you must just use us as banker, please. Thank you very much. Please. We love that. In any case, it's still mm. Wake Up Nigeria here. The first one hour has gone by, and hopefully, you've enjoyed everything that we've brought to you. And we still have 45 minutes to go. My name is Mazino Peel. Of course, I am Mike Mexican. I'll stream the show live if you have to move. 
TVC Entertainment TV, Facebook at TVC Connect, and also on our app. Yes, indeed. We also mm. look forward to your comments, so please keep them coming. Want to read them? Mm. We're here for you guys, and those comments especially, please. Okay, so send them in. Also, make sure that you're following us at TVC Connect on all social media platforms. And uh, yeah, mm. <laughs> we'll uh, respond to your comments when we have the time. To. And also, very soon, you'll be sending in your birthday request, your ah, birthday wishes. Yes. We'll start wishing you the best when mm. it comes to that one. We'll resume it. I know you love that one. Yes, so get ready do. to start sending them in. Let's get straight to what we have <laughs> yes, left in the show today. All right, so coming up on the show, we still have health. And to do that, we're going to be discussing with a very interesting doctor here. Mm. We're going to be talking about the link between alcohol abuse and also mental, mental illness with Dr. Mm. Muna Kadiri, a.k.a. the celebrity shrink, a multiple award-winning mental health physician, advocate, and also a coach. Finally, actor and model Leona Mazur, a Nigerian-American currently based in the Netherlands, famous as Miss Pepeye of the Papa <laughs> Jasko family comedy from way back, if you guys remember that one. She's going to mm. be around to tell us about her journey, and trust us, we are looking forward to it. Oh, that's her from back in the days. Uh, that is. I just, <laughs> that's that picture the brought back memories. That's the Papa Jasko mm. cast right there. Mm. Very interesting mm. thing here are uh, these very, very old um, the soaps. Old pattern, yeah. or soaps. I am wondering whether we have uh, oh a God. library. You just of took these, these things out of my head. Like, very, you know, very interesting. Legendary, legendary. We do, um, because these things got us material. all hooked up. You notice that there's times when you come out, if you were in uh, maybe a gated environment, mm -hmm. you come out and then every house had their TVs switched onto this thing. Yeah. So when you hear the soundtrack, exactly. you hear it everywhere. You want to you mention know? a few? Uh, yeah, the super story. It, when you hear that, that's... I suppose there is even just here. Hey, what just about here? New Masquerade? Oh, you, oh what? <laughs> new, oh, come on. The Bassi, Bassi and Company was there, like one of the first ones. Cock Crew and Dawn. Uh -huh. uh, quite Mike a number Slow, of your them. Age is true. Your age is true. Uh, and then, of course... <laughs> uh, that is true, now. <laughs> then, of course, there was Checkmate. Checkmate's a bit... Checkmate! Checkmate's a bit young. You know, for... Checkmate is still it, even quite recent. It had one of my biggest and first crush, TV crushes ever. Do you know Ego Boy. Oh, wonderful, she wonderful. She was very beautiful, very, what's the word? I don't know if debonairing is the word to use for a You lady. know, and, and uh, how Fuji House of Commotion was, or is a spin-off yeah, exactly. of Checkmate. Yeah. You know, and that's what I love. Fuji House of Commotion is, uh, was just amazing, amazing, amazing. Yeah. I love I love this because, you know, they were locally produced programs. Exactly. They were on our national network. Uh, you know, this way, this, this push a national network. Do we have such like that now? I don't now? know. I don't because know. Because what's happening now? I don't know. It's sad because these were treasures. These were kind of like, they, they either built moral and they did. Mm. Or they took it from a sitcom type of uh, dimension in any case. What they, they thought, they taught you something. Mm. And you could, you could always rely on gaining something from it. From it I don't yeah. know if you still have the same thing when it comes to the current uh, current, uh, I know, I know. Well, when you look at when you look at Africa Magic, there. yes, you have you have people with uh, with different ones, but it, it, they don't have such how do, how do I put it now? Such a common or a widespread mm -hmm. appeal as it used to be then. Mm. So you don't have them now. You have maybe like three or four, or maybe up going on at the same time. Four, yeah. five, six, seven. Yeah, Each one has their track. own fans and call. But th that time it was yeah. everybody. You didn't. You didn't need to. Ah, the nostalgia, everybody. man. My you know. Tuesdays <laughs> at uh, eight o'clock or is it eight thirty mm. on Tuesdays was always a new masquerade. Uh, and I used to look forward to the new, it. new, new, new masquerade was just was it just was just was just something culture. else. I don't know just, if you guys yeah. out there have any particular <laughs> one that we might not be seeing these days. Do let us know because we want to know exactly what to watch, what to. Key into these days. I don't know. <laughs> and he was very young while that was going on, by the way. He was wow. actually kind of like even younger than us at the time mm. while he was playing that yeah, old playing character. That Fantastic. All of them. Oh, man. Oh, man. Hey. Welcome again. Second hour here for Wake Up Nigeria. Let's do the news. And we begin with the Anambra governorship elections, which uh, the National Security Advisor assures will be peaceful. And now, General Babagana Mongunu, while briefing the Independent National Electoral Commission, assured of adequate measure to secure the polls. Now, he also promised that the law enforcement agencies will operate in accordance with the requirements of their profession during the November 6th ballot. INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu also disclosed that the Commission has accomplished 12 out of 14, that's the 14 activities listed in the timetable and schedule of activities for the elections. Now, he added that the Commissioner is working with the National Peace Committee to bring all political parties and candidates to commit to peace before, during, and after the election. In security, we have already done most of what we're supposed to do. 
all the law enforcement agencies, security agencies, etc., have been charged to conduct themselves in a manner that will command the general widespread respect of all the people of Anambra State and by extension. And no fewer than 18 persons were reportedly killed in the early hours of yesterday by gunmen at Mazakuka in Mashegu, local government council of um, Niger State. The armed men in their numbers stormed a mosque in the community while the victims were performing their morning prayers. According to reports, the attackers shot the victims at close range inside, killing many persons and leaving others injured. It was gathered that the armed men came in motor uh, motorcycles. The Niger State Police Command is yet to confirm the attack. And at least four persons have been reportedly killed and three others injured in a brutal clash between some locals and herders in Zangokataf local government area of Kaduna State. According to reports by the security agencies, the authorities, the clash occurred along cattle routes in Jankasa village in Zangokataf local council and later escalated into a fierce fire exchange between the two groups before the arrival of security operatives. This was confirmed by the Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs in Kaduna State, uh, Samuel Arua, in a security report on Monday. Following the incident, a group of armed men attacked some herders at Manchok in Kaura local government area in uh, what security agencies described as apparent reprisal receiving uh, apparent uh, reprisal. Now, receiving the report, Governor Nasir El Rufai condemned the incident and prayed for the repose of the souls of those who were killed. And that's all we have for the news. Do stay tuned. Oh, wow, what a day here today. It's been a fantastic operation going on in the kitchen here, and I call it an operation because huh, what we have for you guys is nothing but stellar. Trust us, Chef Flora in here. Chef Flora, please tell us exactly what has been happening while everybody has been on other segments of the show. Uh, what have we got here? What, what have we arrived okay, at? Okay, so I've been uh, cooking the special sauce. Mm, I can see that already. That goes well with yeah, our Open it, please. Let's see. Aha, oh. magic. So you put the egg in there. I saw you also put some of the locust beans. Yeah. Uh, our egg was already boiled, and then we dropped it into the sauce. In there, we have the tomato sauce that we had from before, yeah. um, the bleached oil as well, bleached and all of that. Should I lower the fire yeah. so that it, uh, it doesn't overcook? So we've just brought that heat down. Uh, also, we have our meat and all of that in there. So in just about a minute, we're going to be serving this, and you guys are going to also be a part of this as well, because we have our rice ready already, our um, ofada rice, and the sauce is going to go join that. And I am looking forward to this. So this didn't take us long at all. At all. So if you were to give an average timing, how long would you say it will take anybody to put it together? Everything, including the preparation time, is 55 minutes. 55 minutes, okay. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner, if that's what you get, guys. And the egg is a very nice addition to that one. But what else can I use apart from egg or meat? If I want to do it with fish, what kind of fish yeah. do you suggest? Okay, your croaker. Croaker. Well. Yeah. Mm, okay, yeah. interesting. The white fish. So All right. Good. Okay, so is the oil a, like, I don't, I'm not a red oil kind of guy. I prefer I the, uh, what do you call it? The granite oil. Ground nut oil of uh, sunflower uh, oil, oh, that yeah. kind of thing. I can do that with it, yeah? Mm, well, maybe if you want to move a little bit away from, mm, from red oil. Yeah. Okay, but it will still taste. But well, that's why we, we, we bleached it. Oh, oh, yeah. now I get it. And the bleached oil gives it uh, a fantastic flavor. Uh, mm. I, I think that that's the flavor yeah. itself. You know, so I, I think yeah. maybe if I change that and I'm changing yeah. the entire um, recipe. Even the sauce was a, a little bit uh, improved on okay. because uh, it's, it's usually the dry chili stuff and mm -hmm. uh, that is really, really peppery. Okay. It's really spicy and uh, a lot okay. of people don't really like okay. too spicy. Okay. Um, so okay. that's why we uh, use the green, the greens. Okay. The green uh, peppers, peppers are usually... Uh, they have uh, mineral salts in them. All right. You know, so okay, fantastic. Very... Fantastic. All right. Well, there you have it, the Ofada sauce that we have been slaving away at trying to put together for everybody out there. Um, we also have very interesting ingredients. In, oh, please run us through all the ingredients that one needs to get to arrive at this. Okay, so uh, if we want to have a sauce like this, you will need to get uh, green pepper, you need uh, scotch bonnet. Mm -hmm. And then you need um, ginger, you need mm. 
uh, garlic, locust beans. You know, locust beans. We also have some crayfish there crayfish as well. Crayfish there. Uh, but the ginger and the garlic is mm. optional. Okay. It's, it's optional. It's not really... The egg too is optional. The egg is optional. Yes. No, no, no. no, don't worry. Everybody <laughs> on Wake Up Nigeria knows me and eggs. I like my egg, and I put egg in every single thing. So please don't take away the egg. It's not optional. Egg is actually but very mandatory. But the locust bean inside it is not optional. The locust that's, beans is definitely, you yes, need the locust beans. that's what makes it the, uh, the well, people ethnic. complain about the smell. Yeah, because Of, of father generally, it's, it's, uh, mm, you know. This, this smell, every, everything in life has a smell. That's <laughs> so, the smell of your father. Is there a way that of, is his uniqueness. Is there a way of removing or pre pre presenting it without the smell? Can yeah. we do without the smell? Yeah. If I had like white oibos from you know, outside the country and I didn't, and I wanted them to really enjoy, enjoy it, would that, would that work? Yes, probably we can just use a little bit of uh, lemon to wash it. Lemon. Yeah, because ah. lemon usually removes uh, odors from okay. things. So mm -hmm. Okay. We just use a little. So bit. don't say we didn't give you guys a tip. Now that's a tip you guys could use if you want to eliminate some of the smell. Some lemon will actually help you do that. It's a very natural deodorizer. Let's put it that way. So you learn that here on TVC. Okay. All right. So. Chef Flora, we can't wait to serve this up. Our rice is already already, and uh, we're going to be putting it inside of just this. Serve, we're just going to serve Just going to sit on top. But yes. I know if we wrap it in, it's going to take some of the taste of the leaf as well. Yeah. So you're going That's to wrap my favorite. own All right. take it away. All right. Like, and get some of that good green <laughs> feel right. in it. All right. All right. Let's uh, do uh, others, uh, other things now. Let's take it on to Mike and find out what's happening on top of the couch. So Mike, what do you have for us? Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Uh, finally, today on the show, we have actor and model Leona Mazur. She's a Nigerian American currently based in the Netherlands, famous as Miss Beckmeyer of the Papa, a Jasko family comedy drama. Some people said the original. I said the numero uno, the number one Miss Beckman here. It is great to have you and welcome. Thank you so uh, much. You had, you, had, you, you, you had or still have such an influence on us growing up. I've been watching you. Oh, <laughs> my, oh, my. I, I, I hope we have some clips here so that we can get to see her <laughs> in her element. My but God. let's just talk about um, how did you get that role, you know, starring in uh, that production as Miss Beckman here? Ah, well, it's a long story, but to, mm. to give it a just, yeah, just to give it a short chill. version of chill, it. Yeah. So, I started with AIT mm. back then. In those days, uh, we did um, stage stage production and mm. some other radio production also. And uh, one of the producers of a radio show, oh, his name skipped me now. Okay, we'll saw we'll me and said, "I think you'll be good for this role." Hmm. And I was like, "What do you mean?" You had um, not been, okay, you were just doing stage I, by yeah, that time. Yeah, I was just doing stage okay. and, you know, um, some production here and there, but mm. not in major. So he told me to go see Wale Adenuga that he's casting for Miss Pepeye. Mm. So, so I went and that was it. Mm. The moment I walked into the door, Wale Adenuga saw me and said, yes, that's the person. Just like that. Just like that. You know, this has happened to me sometime for a particular <laughs> role. And boy, did she kill the role. You recreate I'll that. Recreate so well. the same. You know, yeah, wonderful, yeah. wonderful. And, uh, you know, that, that opened doors for you and all of that. After, after this, and of course, the cre credits to Wale Adenuga Productions for that particular video. After this role, how did the industry open up to you? How was it after the show, before you left the country? Well, I started modeling mm. as well, and that just took off. Um, I did a competition and won for Zizi mm. Kado, mm. Uh, one of the famous Nigerian designers. Um, designers. Yes. And um, then I went to Europe, did um, a runway show there in Milan and um, in Paris. Mm. And so that was it until no. I know, got married. And, and family. <laughs> now, that is, that, is, that is hard for a number of people. Family and career, mm. especially when it comes to a career in showbiz and entertainment. You have to take out time to go, uh, you know, to build your family. Yes. Let, let, let's, let's talk yes. about so that. So I have two wonderful boys. Wow. <laughs> How old are they? From 13, my oldest is 13 and my youngest is um, 11. Wow, good pay yes. has two kids. I know, <laughs> it's, it's hard to believe mm. it's true. I mm. have two, two boys. Mm. But apart from raising up um, my kids and being a wife and all that, I went back to school because... I like that, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Why, why, why did you decide to go back to school? I you mean, know, with the fame from modeling and also acting, a lot of people say, why do you need school? Yes, I started in the... Um, Broadcasting business too, because mm. I went to school of journalism and um, I did radio and TV production. 
But um, back in the U.S., where, where I live, I, it's, it's a long way mm. to go to get to that level. To even imagine an, a Nigerian trying mm. to break, break into the industry. Mm. So I thought, you know what? I think I'm going to do something else. I was ready to put away acting and all of that stuff. I shoved it all, shoved it all behind me mm. and said, you know, that was one time in my life I did that. And, but it wouldn't go away. It wasn't easy, right? It, I because couldn't, I couldn't your... shake it off. Everywhere I went to, I would do something and somebody would say, you should go back to acting or oh, you wow. should be an actress. Mm. Then I have to go through it again and say, yes, I'm an actress. Mm. I just, so I got tired of it. It's mm. like God is telling me, I gave you a gift, girl. Mm. Use it. So I'm yeah. back. Okay. I'm, and yeah. then after getting your degree and everything, you are back to Nigeria now. What, are, what plans do you have for um, for yourself and your career? Well, I have a lot of the works. Um, mm. I'm currently writing my memoir. Mm. Um, it's going to be about my life and my, okay. my journey. And Wonderful. Where I've been. And also I'm preparing um, a podcast. Mm. It's about empowering, empowering women. women. You know, that, yes. that, that, that's also something I want to talk about. It, it, it also it, it comes from the passion you've had growing up and all of that. Tell yeah. us about it, uh, about that podcast. Well, growing up, I came from a poor background. Mm. And um, I've always wanted to, you know, be like those women, those powerful women on TV. Mm. And I was lucky to have... Um, influences in my life, mentors mm. who saw the drive in me and the gift in me and just, you know, they, they, they um, groomed me and that was it. Mm. And so now that I've been around the world and gathered all this experience, I feel greatly that it's time to pay back. Mm. You know, there are so many young ladies out there, or just anyone that, that lost They've lost direction and don't have any mentor in their life. I want to be able to pay back and give somebody that opportunity with the, with the wealth of knowledge that I've gathered over the years. How long has this podcast been running? It's about, it's coming okay, it's out. About, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, co about it's coming to out by okay. um, next year, mid-June. Mm. Okay, yeah. and then from there you get all the people and all yeah. of that. Wonderful, wonderful. Just, I'm gathering wonderful. the information wonderful. right wonderful. now. Now, uh, you made mention about how you had to go to school because of the industry there. Nollywood has changed quite a lot since you, you've been away. You know I've, that. I've, <laughs> you know that. I've been told. Well, I've seen. I've seen. You've seen. seen. Yeah, I've seen what also. can you say? How has the industry evolved? Is it, uh, is, is it because now you, you have productions where you have better, uh, you know, equipment, you know, and all of that. Uh, pictures are now sharper. There's more improvement. How has the industry evolved? Is it, is, it, is, it, is it something that has gone in the very right direction? or Because I know people still say, oh, I prefer the old Nollywood and all of that. Let's talk about the evolution of Nollywood. Well, I think what people mean when they say they prefer the old Nollywood is the fact that they, we have, like, there were real talents. They were raw talents. Mm. People, were, people were in, the, in showbiz because of the love for talent, the, the, the talent and the mm. love to, to do what they, they enjoy mm. doing. They enjoy doing. So, um, I agree with you. Um, technology has also helped. Mm. You know, you said something about the, the quality of the videos are more mm. sharper now. So quality has improved, mm. and we are currently stationed or positioned uh, on, on the international level. level exactly. So that's a good thing, but there's still more work to be done. Mm. Where yeah, do you think that work can be done? Storytelling, behind the scenes? Yes, and good storytelling. Mm. Good storytelling and um, quality um, actors, mm. you know. So there's room, there's room to grow. There's room there to grow. Wonderful. So looking forward now in the next five, in the next ten years, how, how do you expect all of this to fold out? Where do you see yourself? Where do I see myself? Well, I see myself doing what I do and I love doing. Mm. That is entertaining and informing and empowering. And you also, you also have some love for metaphysics or so? What yes, is it? I... Talk, talk, to me, talk to me about that. Well, uh, I... I don't want to go too far, but I'm just going to give you a little bit. Okay, all so right. So metaphysics is something that has helped me a lot. Mm. It, helps, it has helped me discover who I am, mm. why I'm here on this planet, mm. and what my role is. See, I've, I've developed a personal relationship with myself, and, and metaphysics 
was the one thing that has helped me to done this so well. Mm. So yeah. well. Yeah. At what period in your life did this come in? Did you did you uh, what what what, necess what pushed you towards this discovery via metaphysics? So two years ago, yeah, my dad was sick. Okay. And um, back then I was in school also, and it was a it was a, a rough time in my life. There was so many things going a wire, and I I broke I broke down. I broke wow. down. I didn't I didn't see a way out. Wow. But then. God, God spoke to me. Mm. He came, came through metaphys metaphysics to mm. enlighten me, opened me up for, you know, the greater picture, mm. and that gave me strength. And Wonderful. that strength was what helped me take care of my dad. He's, he's healthy now. He's, he is. He's, he's doing much better. Wonderful. Thank God. Wonderful. And so, yeah, and I want to, I want to share that. With I feel, all the people. I feel mm. that. Um, a lot of people will benefit from this this knowledge. Leona, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you for what you're doing for Thank your you. podcast. I'm looking forward to those young girls, the ones that you can give advice, yeah. they can speak to, they'll probably have some direction that uh, normally might not have come to them. But yes, wishing you the best. Thank you. I want you to go as far as you went <laughs> and even much further. Thank right? you. Okay, let's feel a bit of pepper. We have something for you. Oh, you do. Mazino's well. in the kitchen. You do love of you. I hope you love yes. the spice yes. of father. Oh, please. Okay. You get to see that. Been back, I've okay. been eating my next Nigerian food. Wonderful. Nigerian food. Wonderful. So, yeah, Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> it is so amazing to see that clip, and then it is so amazing to see Leona right here in person. In yeah? person because you're a legend. You Thank are. You. Um, I remember one of those episodes <laughs> where you actually gave this kid, I think, 50 naira or so to go get a car. Get 20 naira one for you and get me 30 naira one. And the guy got there and then he bought, there was no a car, there was only 20 naira one. So he bought his own 20 naira one, ate it, and then returned that 30 naira. That there was, <laughs> and then she fainted. What did she do? She I fainted. Was, I was, yeah, yeah. You fainted. I remember that, that so much. I was waiting to eat something. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you remember, yeah? Yeah, I remember. I remember. And here you are. That was years I know, ago. I know. I'm, to I'm about to eat something. Delicious. Yes, so only this is not Akara, and it's not too, it's not that in Okay, this is better than Akara. This <laughs> is Opada, and Chef Flora has put this together. Chef Flora, yeah. please just tell her exactly what this is. Okay, so this is uh, our own indigenous uh, rice, locally mm -hmm. made rice, okay. unpolished. Uh, it's very healthy. Mm -hmm. It has uh, a lot of essential minerals and in it. Very good for. Uh, bone health. Chef Laura will give you, Swats. she will give you wow. a lecture on this. Swats, uh, digestion, <laughs> okay. yeah. fight, so, constipation and all that. What we're going to do is, we know you can't wait, so we're going to let you have it already. Have it. See this one, he can't wait because <laughs> he can only have some only after you have had yours. And mm. uh, Chef Laura also uh, helped us out with some lemon juice. Would you like oh, me to serve you? Oh, please yes, do. let me be your butler for today. <laughs> Let me, uh, I don't know that's, 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 right. that's lemon juice. Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, watermelon, yeah? Watermelon. Water, 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 watermelon? Yes, exactly. Awesome. 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 So you awesome. can see the style I'm using. I know, right? It's okay now. You, you're spoiling me. <laughs> you, you have spoiled us when we're small. Let's spoil you now, right? <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome. Oh. Try it out. Tell us what it, what it tastes like. Mmm. Mm. I'm eating that. You want to carry the plate? Yes, no. Carry it, man. Yeah. 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 Carry it. It's Nigeria. You can even use your hand if you want. Fantastic, isn't it? Oh my goodness. <laughs> small, small. Slow down, slow down, <laughs> slow down, <laughs> Leona. It's all yours. Nobody's <laughs> singing from you. But isn't it great? And she can't talk. It's yeah. all right. Wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Chef wonderful. Laura, congratulations, man. Thank you so much. That is well beautiful. Well I wasn't Thank expecting you. this, but oh my God. Yeah. Mm. This is the authentic one. <laughs> mm. Wonderful. Thank you for all Thank those you. years of great content. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank for, having you for coming me. back. It's Mike, a pleasure. Yeah, what's up? It's been a wonderful show. Thank you. Uh, we should do this. No, no. We should no, not do this again. It's too much work. It's too much work. Thank back. you. Thank you. <laughs> Tell everyone who's been a part of the show. Thank you for a wonderful Tuesday. We will see you tomorrow. Yes, indeed. Bye-bye mm. and watch out for your view, which is up next.